Okay, so previously a guest of mine actually requested that I make a video about how I did a specific mechanic within my game. Uh, I'd like to see how you did what you did. I'd like to see your code or your, you know, your back end. I might have to show you. And I actually would like to see that. I might have to share a picture of that with you. Or make a video about it. That'd be cool. I probably could actually. So, let's check it out. Okay, so what I did was I set a timer script and a random value to give it that randomness. And depending on the random value, it would set the script. Now, if it landed on the right value, it would assign the script to the button, basically hijacking the button. And I set it up so that it would be the opposite direction of the button press to give you that extra randomness feeling because the game was out of control. And that's where I was going with that. Now, because of that, what I did was I said, hey, if he's, you press this way, I'm going to make you go the opposite way for the other character. Uh, there are disadvantages as well as advantages to using this kind of script to make it a simulated second player sprite or to give you control over another sprite. Now, else was to basically say, hey, let's remove all those scripts that I previously added. So, depending on the randomness, it would say, hey, we're gonna assign all these scripts or we're gonna take them off. All right, so that's basically how I did it. So, what can't you do using this technique? There's some very specific things you simply can't do, like, limit the movement by putting up blocks. You can't put barriers in front of your secondary sprite. You can't have the camera locked to it. And you can't interact with other objects through the second sprite. So in very limited scenarios, can you actually use this? I hope this is helpful and that you enjoyed this content. I will see you guys later. Bye.